Hey, what's up, you guys? Filmfan0599 here again, and welcome back to the universe of the Blue Tubers. And today on Universe of the Blue Tubers, I'm gonna be doing my top ten favorite Queens of the Stone Age songs. Queens of the Stone Age are a alternative rock band that really got their popularity in the 2000s, really. But their first studio album came out in 1998. But it really, but really, like in 2000 when they released their second studio album, Rated R, that's what really got somewhat of the band kind of noticed. Like some people were like, okay, maybe we should take, you know, take a look at this band, see if, what they can do next. And then the third studio album came out, Songs for the Death, and that's what really put this band on the map and really made them a mainstay in rock, really. And, yeah, and they're still going today. They've got a new album coming out next month called Villains. Very excited about that. So, yeah, I figured, and also since they're one of my favorite bands of all time, I figured why not I come on here and talk about some of my favorite songs from them. And this shall be an interesting list. So, yeah, so let's get into the list. But actually, before we get into the list, I do have some honorable mentions. And those honorable mentions are... Feel Good Hit of the Summer, Song for the Deaf, um, Everyone Knows That You're Insane, Threes and Sevens, and Keep Your Eyes Peeled. Those are my honorable mentions. So, now, let's get into the actual list. And coming in at number 10 is Smooth Sailing. Smooth Sailing was a song that I kind of was like, it's good, but it's not that great at first when I first listened to it. However, the more times I listened to this song, the more I started to love it. Like, it's so great, the song. The song really, I believe, is about someone who really doesn't care about the responsibilities all that much. And I definitely get that feel with this song, because this song is just kind of laid back. The guy, kind of, I guess you could say, the guy in the song really just doesn't care about his responsibilities. He just wants to have fun and just wants to, you know, just throw everything away I guess you could say and it's really great and you really get that feel with this song I just love kind of the hypnotic blues feel you got to get with this song it's so great I love it like the guitar work is so fantastic Josh Homme's vocals are great too like especially when he would like sound like this he'd be like I got my own theme music like whenever he would sing sing it like that was great I think that's what kind of turned me off about the song at first was was that was when he would sound like that during the song and I was just like uh, but it grew on me more and more and I actually loved it the more times I heard it I guess when I got used to it a little bit more I guess I liked it a lot more than I did beforehand and it really works with the song I really love a lot of the lyrics to this song too like especially one in general where he says I blow my load all over the status quo here we go just great I love it like it's so so fantastic. I really love a lot of the lyrics to this song. It's fantastic. It's definitely one of the best off of Like Clockwork. It's a great song. I love uh, Smooth Sailing a lot. What a great song. Definitely one of the best off of Like Clockwork and definitely one of my favorites in general from Queens of the Stone Age. Definitely a song that grew on me over time. I really love Smooth Sailing a lot. What a great song. So, coming in at number 9 is You Think I Ain't Worth a Dollar. But I feel like a millionaire. You think I ain't worth a dollar, but I feel like a millionaire. It's quite an it, it's quite an adrenaline rush of a song. It really is. It's quite the adrenaline rush of a song, if you ask me, of course. It really is. Uh, Nick Oliver, Nick Oliver, he is the basis. He was the basis of the group at the time, and you know, he does a really great job. He is the lead vocalist on this song, and he does such a great job. Even though I, you know. I liked him in, you know, Rated R, for example. Like, he did a pretty solid job with songs like Ten, uh, Tense Head with his vocals, but songs like Quick and, the, and To The Pointless. Oh, God, that song is so awful to me. I hate that song so, so much. It's probably one of my least favorites from them. And his vocals are so god-awful on that. But, however, here, it really works, actually. His vocals really work on this song. And he screams a lot, and he is yelling to the top of his lungs, and he is great. It sounds really great with this song. It really does. It's just an adrenaline rush, rush of this of a song, and really kind of starts off songs of the death 
really perfectly because this is really kind of the opening track i know it's not really the opening track per se but it's really the song that kind of gets the album started if you know what i mean and it just really does it, it's so so great and to kind of take something from um uh nick free from uh masterpiece reviews to take something from him what he's saying in his songs for the deaf review it's like the song is like you're being tied to a cadillac and it just keeps and it just goes it just goes and never stops that's the song basically and it's really great and nick oliver is really the one that makes this song really he is so great the guitar work and the drum work are really great on this song too just, you think I ain't worth a dollar but feel like a millionaire. It's just one big old adrenaline rush of a song. And every time I need to feel, I guess you could say, kind of fuel myself up, I guess I just pull on this song and I'm all good. I'm all fueled up and I'm ready to go, I guess. So, yeah. You think I ain't worth a dollar but I feel like a millionaire is my number nine. So moving on to my number eight. And my number eight is The Lost Art of Keeping a Secret. The Lost Art of Keeping a Secret was actually the first single released off of Rated R. And, um, really, I'm kind of glad that they went with this as the first single, because this is definitely one of the best off of Rated R. I love The Lost Star of Keeping a Secret. It's so, so great. It's really what makes this song a lot to me is the instrumentation to it. You know, you hear the guitar, you hear the... Like, just that guitar work is so great. And then you even hear a xylophone. Like, you hear, doom, 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 bam. Like, you just hear a xylophone in the background, too. Like, the instrumentation with the song is really great and really fits a lot with the song, especially with Josh Homme's vocals during the song as well, too. Like, I love it a lot. I love a lot of the lyrics to this song. It's about kind of, you know, trying to keep a secret, really. You know, and how it's kind of hard to keep that secret. You know what I mean? That's really what the song is about. And, of course, that chorus. I love that chorus. You know, whatever you do, don't tell anyone. Just... It's so great, and Josh Homme sounds great on the song. It really is. I really love the lost art of keeping a secret a lot. Really, my favorite element of the song is the instrumentation to it. It really is quite fantastic, and it really works with the tone of that song. It's just such a great song. Definitely one of my favorites off of Rated R. And, yeah, I can see why that this is one of their most popular tracks, because... It's so great. It's so fantastic. I really love The Lost Star of Keeping a Secret a lot. It definitely is one of their best songs. So yeah, Lost Star of Keeping a Secret comes at number 8. Number 7, The Vampire of Time and Memory. The, vampi the Vampire of Time and Memory, this is my favorite song off of Light Clockwork. This song really, wow. And this song is quite powerful, actually. You know, uh, Josh Ami, you know, you... You hear him sing. At first, you hear kind of like an electronic. At first, you hear like you hear like an electronic feel at first. And then you hear a piano going. You know, you hear bam, bam, bam. Like you hear a piano going, and then you hear Josh Homme's vocals, and it's just so great. Like it's so just kind of mellow and really just kind of soft in the way. Like it's really mellow, and it really is. Like it's just so fantastic. And like you hear the guitar come in and you know the drums and everything but it's very soft very soft really like you know it, it really works a lot for this song it's very very different from a lot of things that queens of the stone age have done this is a lot more of a mellow and kind of turned down song if you know what i mean and it's really great like i love it a lot like it's just so beautiful to listen to like it really is like it's definitely the best track off of a light clockwork in my opinion it, it's so great like you could just sit back and just kind of lay back like this and just kind of just listen to it just take it all in and listen to it that's really what how i can perfectly describe this song as it's just a song you could just lay back and listen to it, it's so beautiful it really is i love the vampire of time and memory so so much it's such a beautiful track. And then, you know, towards the finale, it does get louder and louder. Like, the finale gets louder. But it's really great, and it's just so beautiful. It really is. I love The Vampire of Time and Memory so, so much. It's such a beautiful song. It, it's so great. Um, and it's definitely, like I said, the best track off of Light Clockwork. The piano, the you know, the way Josh Homme's vocals are in this song, it's so, so great. It's so mellow, but so great. I love the, the Vampire of Time and Memory so, so much. Definitely one of my favorites. 
so fantastic. So coming in at number six is go with the flow. Go with the flow is just one of those songs. Kind of like with you think I ain't worth a dollar, but feel like like you think I ain't worth a dollar, but feel like a millionaire. Well, like with that song. Funny enough, they're both on the same album. This is just another one of those adrenaline rush of the songs. Like. Seriously, like, you know, when you first hear it at first, it just kind of, you know, you hear the piano, that one tap of the piano, like, one tap of the piano, the bin, din, 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 like, just, and the guitar work, it's such a fast-paced song in a way, like, with the instrumentation of it, it, it's so great, like, it just keeps going, like, you can drive, like, really fast to this song, like, it's just one of those songs, and what this song is basically about, it's about kind of, a woman who goes from relationship to relationship and wants things to get really serious in that certain relationship, she just ditches. And it's so great. I love all of the lyrics to it. A lot of the lyrics are so fantastic to this song. Especially, um, like, um, I want something to, uh, like, it's something I, something worth, worth dying for or something like that. Like, it, it's really great. A lot of the lyrics are so fantastic to this song. Like, they really are. I really love the lyrics to it. That's probably my favorite element. Like, this and the instrumentation to the song are probably my favorite elements of this song a lot. It also has a great music video to it. If you've never seen the music video to the song, definitely check it out. It's great. So, yeah, Go With The Flow is another one of those songs you just listen to and you just go. You just go, go, go. I love Go With The Flow. Like, especially, man, just, I, I can't get that piano, like, that piano out of my head. Yo, just that piano, that one tap of the piano where they go ding 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 like I just can't get that out of my head. It's always stuck in my head every time I listen to the song. It's so great. I really love Go With The Flow a lot. It's definitely one of the best off of songs for the deaf and it's just one of my favorites in general. I love Go With The Flow. So coming at my number five, we're into the top five folks. Coming at my number five is Lightning Song. Kind of maybe a shock to a lot of people, maybe that this is on my list, or even this high on my list. Lightning Song, I love. I love Lightning Song a lot. It, it, I'm a sucker for instrumental songs. I really am. I'm a real big, you know, big sucker for really good instrumental tracks, and this is definitely one of them. I love the, kind of the instrumental feel with this song. You know, you first hear the acoustic guitar, the boom, da boom, boom, and you hear kind of bongos, I think. I think that's what they were using. They were using an acoustic guitar and bongos, and it really works. Like, it, it really works, this song. It's just kind of beautiful with the acoustic guitar and the bongos. It, it just, it flows so well. Like, it's just a, another one of those songs you could just kind of lay back and just relax to. It's such a relaxing song to me. And also... Try playing the song when it's actually thundering outside. It gives it kind of an atmosphere, really. I, I did that one time and actually gave it kind of somewhat of an atmosphere. It was really cool. And yeah, Lightning Song is really, honestly, it's a really simple song. It's really simple. It's a, just a nice, simple instrumental track. And it's my favorite off of Rated R. I love it so, so much. You know, that's what I kind of looked at at first, whenever I first listened to the album. It's just kind of, well, just, just kind of a, just a nice instrumental track. But the more I listened to it, the more I kind of just sat there and listened to the song, I loved it more and more than each time I listened to it. It's just so great. It's so beautiful and just so relaxing to listen to. So yeah, Lightning Song, wow, fantastic. I, I love the acoustic, the acoustic guitar use in this song, the bongo use. It's so great. I love Lightning Song a lot. It's definitely, I mean, it's in my top five, so it goes to show you how much I love the song a lot. It's so fantastic. It's by far my favorite song off of Rated R. So, yeah, Lightning Song comes in at my number five. Number four is Someone's in the Wolf. Someone's in the Wolf is really, this is my favorite track off of Lullabies to Paralyze, and it's the only one that made my list from this uh, album. I do think that's a great album, but really it's Someone's in the Wolf. That's really the kind of the defining track of that album. Really, it really is. It's really the defining track of that album. And what really makes that song to me is the instrumentation. The man Queens and Stones know how to do great instrumentations with their songs. And this is one and this is another prime example of that. Just 
like the guitar work, the like just that, just that guitar riff, guitar riff, riff with that song, and the drumming with that song is so great. And really, what the song is kind of about, really, the wolf in this song is actually a sexual predator. That's yeah, that's what really the wolf is in this song, and it's just it's really creepy as well. Like, when you read the lyrics and, like, hear the lyrics all, the, like, especially in the chorus where he says, You can stay forever, like, when he's singing that, it's just really creepy, like, it's like, ugh, like, it's, like, it's really creepy when, when Josh Homme is kind of, was, is really singing that in this song, and it really is, and it just kind of gets under your skin, the song, and I love that, like, I love songs that can do that, like, just get under your skin and all that, and this is one of them, definitely, Someone's in the Wolf, is just one of those songs that just gets under your skin, like, makes you feel ugly inside, like, it definitely is one of those songs, and I love it so, so much, like, it's definitely the best track off of Lullabies to Paralyze, in my eyes, <laughs> that rhymed, and, you know, it's, you know, the song's 7 minutes and 16 seconds, but, you know, it doesn't feel like that. Like, it just goes by so quickly. It's so great. I love Someone's in the Wolf so much. It's such just a creepy song that just gets under your skin so much. It's just a song that knows how to get under your skin. I love it so much. So, yeah, Someone's in, Mo Someone's in the Wolf comes at number 4. Number 3. Sick, sick, sick. Now, I'm not the hugest fan of Aerovagulis, or however you say the last, the, however you say that. I'm not a huge fan of the album. It's okay at best. It's not a bad album, per se. But, 666 is quite the song. 666 is fantastic. I, I, I go back to this song so many times, despite how I feel about this album. 666 is so great. It's such a fantastic song. You know, that oh, just that opening riff when you hear Juno, 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 ah, like, and you just hear that, and, and then just the song just goes with the instrumentation. And apparently, the front man for the Strokes uh, was also on guitar and had backing vocals on the song, so that's cool. And just, I love kind of the fast paced nature with the song as well, too. Like, even Josh Homme sounds a little bit like when he's singing, he's going a little bit fast, like, you know, it, it's really great, and especially that chorus of sick, 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 don't resist. Like, just that chorus, that chorus, man. I love that chorus, that song. And just a lot of the lyrics to it, too, are so great. Like, it really is. It's just one of those songs that you could you just listen to, and it's just so great. The instrumentation, like I said, is so just fantastic. It's so great. I love it so, so much. That guitar riff. That could, why do I keep on saying it like that? The guitar riff is so great to this song. I love sick, sick, sick. It definitely makes you feel sick, sick, sick when you're listening to it. I love it so, so much. Sick, sick, sick is definitely... But that's a tongue twister. Like, it's <laughs> sick, sick, sick. Like, just saying it over and over again. Like, it kind of messes you up a little bit. But yeah, sick, sick, sick. What a great song. I definitely love it. Definitely by far the best song off of this album, without question. So, yeah, 666 comes out my number three. Number two, number two. We're getting near to the end of the list. So, coming at my number two is No One Knows. I know, kind of cliche to put this this high on, your high on the list and everything. I know, I know. But, I can't help it. I know it's the band's most popular track, but I can't help it. This song is just perfect. Like, this song is one of the decades, is one of the 2000s most, like, most defining rock songs for a reason. Like, this song is so great from everything. If you don't even know who, who the hell Queens of the Stone Age are, you know that opening guitar riff, riff and you know what this freaking song it is. Okay, you know, like, what song, like, you when you hear that, bam, 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 bam. When you hear that, you know exactly what song it is. You know it's No One Knows. Like, it's just one of the most iconic guitar riffs ever. Like, it's so great. And also the bass line on the song, too, is quite fantastic, too. Like, uh, Nick Oliver's uh, bass line on that song is quite great. You know, the... Like, it's just it's so 
great. Everything about this song is so perfect, from the lyrics to it, to the chorus. Like, this song is about, like, getting, like, prescription drugs or whatever, and really not knowing what the symptoms are going to be like. Like, you know, kind of the effects of it will be. Kind of hence the title, No One Knows. And it really is so, so great. Like, I love it so much. Josh Homme's vocals are fantastic on this song. They are quite great. It's just so fantastic, this song. Like, I love the instrumentation to it. The drum work from Dave Grohl on this song is so great. Like, just everything about this song is so perfect. And, of course, that explosive chorus with the song is fantastic. I love that chorus so, so much. It really is. Like, it's my ringtone. I'm not kidding you. As of making this uh, video, it's my ringtone, the chorus to this song. It is. I love it so, so much. This, this song in general is just so perfect. It's like the perfect rock song. And, you know, I'm glad that this was one of the most defining songs of the 2000s for rock. Because, you know, at a time where really rock wasn't, you know, kind of, kind of stumbling, stumbling a little bit. This song came in and really kind of, you know, like, no, this is rock. And that was great. I love it so, so much. No one knows what a great song. Seriously. But, it's not my number one, though. What is my favorite Queens of the Stone Age song of all time? And my favorite, my number one, my number one favorite Queens of the Stone Age song ever is The Sky is Fallen. The Sky is Fallen, man. What a song. This is a perfect song. Like, this is, like, this is the defining song for them. To me, at least. Like, I'm, like, I am speechless whenever I talk about this song. Because this song is such, it's so beautifully haunting. Like, it really is. Like, the instrumentation to it, like, just the beginning of the song when you hear the drums. And you just hear Josh Homme go, la, 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 la. La, la 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 like just when you hear that and then just just the guitars come in and just all the instruments just kick in into the song it, it's just and then you hear kind of josh homie really talking about like humans like praise at the sun like just kind of the lyrical content is really haunting as well like it's so great and what really the song is about is like jo josh homie trying to deal with his problems and stuff but honestly, this song could be about the end of the world as well. Especially with the haunting instrumentation of the song, and really it's haunting lyrical content. Like, this song could really be about the end of the world as well. Like, just, this song, the perfect way to describe this song is beautifully haunting. That's the perfect way to describe this song in my eyes. It's a beautifully haunting song. Like, seriously, it's such, just a beautiful haunting beautifully haunting that's the perfect way to put like just from its instrumentation to the guitar work to the drums to just everything it really makes you feel like that this is the end this is the end of the world as we know it you know what i mean that's really what i think the song really makes you feel like like this is the end and we're all gonna die like it's so great and then of course the chorus with the song in that beautiful beautiful bridge of close your eyes and see the skies are falling just wow it's such a beautifully haunting song it really is it's haunting but beautiful at the same time it's why my favorite song about the end of the world to be completely honest with you like it really is like just this way that this the way the song just really picks that of the end of the world with this song is so great like, it's so beautiful. Like, it really is. Like, from, like I said, the guitar work to even Josh just singing. La, 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 la. Like, just him singing that. Like, it's just such a beautifully haunting song. Like, there's no other song to me in Queens of the Stone Age's discography that really beats this song. This is literally a perfect rock song. And it's kind of a shame that this song doesn't get as much attention as it should. Because, man, it's so great. It really is. I love it so, so much. I immediately fell in love with it when I first listened to this album. When I first listened to Songs for the Deaf, obviously it's my favorite track off of the album. So, I just immediately fell in love with this song. 
and it's definitely my favorite song from Queens of the Stone Age. I really don't see ever seeing a song beating it for me in terms of Queens of the Stone Age. This song is so great. It's literally a perfect song. It is the perfect song. When the world ends, this is the song we're going to hear. This right here. The sky is falling. This song is so great. It's so beautifully haunting. I love The Sky is Falling so, so much. It really is, by far, my favorite song from Queens of the Stone Age. So, that was my top 10 favorite songs from Queens of the Stone Age. If you have listened to Queens of the Stone Age, and you, you know, you have enough songs that you've listened to to make a top 10 list out of it, what would your top 10 be? Leave it in the comment section below, and I'm Film Fan 0599, and we'll see you out later. Peace.